So what, what are we asking here? So there, is, there are like theoretically two points. One conjecture is like if lower caste people are living close to upper caste people, they might get positive benefit from like the upper caste resources, say education, roads, transport. There's another orthodox conjecture that says if uh, lower caste people or shidduch caste people, they live closer to upper caste dominated areas, they might suffer uh, oppressive disadvantage. So we don't know what the net effect is, and this question is very important, and it's very important to see how that affects education and occupational mobility. In addition, we also explore what Vigard and like Aryan and his co-authors like looked into, uh, called enclave effect, which is like if one lives in their own dominated village, how, does it help or does it hurt its own group members? So if I don't get time, so just briefly telling like uh, our contributions are we go beyond individual level social group differences and study the impacts of social and community di dynamics on educational and occupational mobility. We are able to investigate how this traditional uh, caste hierarchy over the generation, is it helping or hurting uh, mobility and we also investigate the community dominance. What role does it play? So just a quick preview. So we, we find upward educational or occupational mobility is lower for all social groups. So by social groups, I'm going to talk about scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, other backward caste, and Muslims in comparison to upper caste. Uh, for enclave effect, the result is kind of mixed. For education, there's positive effect for scheduled caste, but negative for Muslims. For occupation, there is only positive effect for scheduled caste. So living in upper caste dominated village, which we call the proximity effect, has a positive effect for scheduled caste for both education and occupation. So we use the India Human Development Survey Round 2, and we focus on grandfather-father pair and father-son pair, which we call G1, G2, and G2, G3. And uh, so father implies the head of the household. So that's how we make the distinction. Uh, educational categories is very standard, and it has been done in the literature quite a lot, and I'm not going to try to motivate here. So it's categorized into seven uh, groups. It's from lowest to highest. And occupational categories is similar. So agriculture and other manual labors would be the lowest group, and professional would be highest group. So does people from here move upward, or how, how does this go? So we define upward mobility at the individual level. It is a dummy that takes a value of 1. If educational attainment between generation is positive, 0. Otherwise, same for land dominance. So dominance for land is defined at the village level the group that holds majority of the land is deemed to be the dominant group. So here's an interesting plot, which might be a bit confusing for most people, but let's see if I can try to do it within time. So this axis shows like which group is like dominant by population, and this shows uh, land dominance, and this shows like the percentage. So we see that OBCs, whether they are population dominant, they are also like living in the same, so they are also land dominant. Same for upper caste as well, same for Muslims as well, same for scheduled caste as well, but not so much for scheduled, uh, sh sorry, same for scheduled tribes as well, but not so much for scheduled caste. So th there's like lots of variation here. Uh, when we look into now by uh, individual level, so this is like, the groups, so OBCs, SC, SD, Muslim, and upper caste, and this is where they are living. So OBCs are still like the dominant group with a major fraction. Upper caste is like it's still dominant here. SCs is a very small fraction. SDs where, where they're like uh, they're, they're living in their own areas, and same for Muslims. Uh, so this is a Sankey plot, which, so imagine this is like the grandfather, this is the father, and this is the son. I don't want you to focus too much on the graph, but all I want you to see is, you see a lot of illiterate grandfather, and the son got more literate, 
and the same trend persists. What about for occupation? Well, the result is not so clear. So there has been like some stagnation, some downward mobility, some upward mobility, if you just look at the farmers. So, and you see the similar trend here as well between father and the son. So some upward movement, but a lot of downward movement. So at the lowest end, there has been some upward movement, but for all the other groups, there has been like mixed movements. So what is our empirical specification? So we like, uh, so this would be the intergenerational mobility measure for, let's say, father-son or like grandfather-father on the left-hand side. This is like the social group indicator where the social groups are scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, OBCs, and Muslims. And then we like see if the group, social group is the dominant group in the village, how does that affect? Does it help? Does it hurt? And we call this enclave effect. So here, the proximity effect is the social group if they live in a village which is upper caste dominated, does it help or does it hurt them? So what do we find? I think, yes. So in comparison to upper caste, all the groups are doing much worse. So what happens when we look into like own dominated uh, villages? So for scheduled caste, uh, living in their own dominated village has a significant and positive effect. For uh, STs, OBCs, uh, the results are, so for OBCs, there's one significant effect. For Muslims, the effect is negative. For upper caste, it's insignificant. So what about when they live in upper caste dominated village? Uh, scheduled caste, when they live in upper caste dominated village, they benefit for education. What about for occupation? So for occupation, so the, most of the effect is negative. Here we can just see there is literally no significant effect going on throughout. So this is the grandfather and father generation. What about for the father-son generation? Similar trend, there is in comparison to upper caste, uh, OBCs, SCSTs, and Muslims are doing much worse. Scheduled uh, tribe, when they live in their own dominated village, they're worse off. And upper caste, in the basic model, they are like better off if they live in their own dominated village, but the result, but the result doesn't last. What about for occupation? So here, negative effect as well. And for scheduled caste, when they live in upper caste dominated village, they have a positive effect. So just to take a moment and think through what might be the mechanisms for what we are seeing the results. So we look into a lot of different mechanism and different channels. So I'm not gonna show all the results, but we think the village public goods like village infrastructure, roads, electricity, distance to like a proper road, uh, water, these are quite important indicators and we, we, I will just quickly show you. Uh, village uh, level shocks, agroecological zones, these are also important factors. Schools and schooling profession, these are quite important. Social cohesion, so does like a political influence matter for like the social uh, education and occupational mobility? And the discrimination effects come from the oppressive, uh, like proximity effect, whether there is a positive effect or is there a negative effect. So just to show you, uh, village good provision, so permanent road, so there is, for scheduled cars, there's, there's no significant effect. For scheduled tribe, everything is worse off in comparison to the reference group, which is the OBC. Like, and for Muslims, permanent road, in comparison to the OBCs, the uh, Muslims are worse off for per, uh, like permanent road, distance to permanent road, piped water, and bus stop. For upper caste, the results are insignificant. So what about for educational provision? So Pri is primary school, like if, if a village has like a primary school, MID is middle school, SEC is secondary school, and this is high secondary school. So what do we find? So like uh, in comparison to the OBCs, SCs are worse off, 
STs are also worse off for all the segments apart from like the primary school and the high secondary, which is insignificant. For Muslims, similar trend persists. And for upper caste, they are also worse off, at least in the primary and in the uh, uh, middle school. So just to quickly wrap up, uh, we find that there has been upward uh, education and occupational mobility. So mobility for all the social group is much worse in comparison to uh, upper caste. The results are mixed when they live in uh, their uh, own dominated village. And living in upper caste dominated village has a positive effect on just uh, scheduled caste for education and occupation. And yeah, I would like to wrap up, so thanks. Thank you.